Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. Today I'll briefly be talking about another postcolonial term, going native, which was often used and still used um, within the European vocabularies as a pejorative term. Literally, going native meant whenever a European, let's say, living in the colonies adopted the ways and culture and habits of the colonized natives. So people would say he's gone native or in the act of doing it was considered going native. And the best example of it probably is Kurtz from uh, Conrad's Heart of Darkness. Uh, he doesn't just become part of the local culture, but adopts the most excessive qualities of a tyrannical leader with the power to dispense punishments and all within the colonial space. And that's an extreme example of someone going native. But normally the term was used to refer to any European settlers or European officials living in the colonies and then absorbing or adopting some cultural linguistic or other traits of the colonizers and that act or that practice was designated as going native. And the reason it was considered a bad thing or a negative thing was because in the colonial imagination, there was a distinct separation between the superior so-called European culture and the inferior native culture and native beings and so and and so the colonial space was represented often even in poetry and writing as this contaminating space a space that if you weren't careful would either corrupt you or rob you of your superior european values so anytime a settler european or a european on a tour of duty within the colonies left the demarcated cultural and geographical space of his own superior so-called culture and ventured into the native culture and adopted its habits, that act was considered a bad act and was considered going native. Now, I mean, look at the geography of colonialism itself, and you can see that in most British colonies, the colonizers or the officers who ran the colonial enterprise lived separately. They would have their own townships, highly planned, highly with highly controlled exit and entrances. And then there was, in that purely Fanonian explanation, the cuspa where the natives lived. Right? Most of the times, the officers usually traveled there only when absolutely necessary, right? because the natives were supposed to come and come to the courts, come and request uh, and attendance at the deputy commissioner's office and others. But if the colonial officers themselves became part of the community and started living in with them, started dressing like them, started eating their food, performing their rituals, then that act was seen as a contaminating act that was seen as they losing their Europeanness, and hence the term going native was used. There are, however, some exceptions. I mean, if you are aware of the famous Anglican Orientalist debate uh, within the Indian context, there were quite a few Orientalists, Oriental scholars who actually respected and loved the cultures that they had studied. They still, still saw it from their own European perspective, but they did adopt the ways of life and they didn't consider it as a contaminating thing. They considered it as becoming wiser and learning the ways of the East. They were still playing with the old stereotypes of the mysterious East or the East that can give them wisdom, but at least their relationship with the colonial spaces and the colonial culture was not necessarily seen by them as a negative act. A great example of that would be uh, Ralph Russell from recent contemporary scholars, a great scholar of Ghalib, right, and um, knew his Urdu, wrote quite a few books on Ghalib. And when uh, in, in his home in England, you know, he called it a sarai, right, 
which is like uh, an inn because he had adopted the culture so much and then made his own home as a sort of a replica of what could have been Ghalib's own home maybe. So there are these exceptions, but overall going native always implies that a European somehow because of the landscape that he is in has lost sense of himself and hence his self has been imprinted by the contaminating impact of the space that he is in. At least that's the argument in Heart of Darkness by some scholars, that it's not a novel about Africans. It's a novel about the disintegration of the European self, right? What happens to it when it's in a place which has no law and has a foreign culture? And there is a great refutation of that, of course, by Chenua Achebe. But overall, going native was considered to be a negative thing and it involved on the part of the Europeans adopting any native custom, customs, mode of dress, food, music, and adopting them in, in a, an effort to either behave like the natives or look like the natives. And it was considered a bad thing by the colonial powers. And that is what it meant when they would blame someone or say something about someone who had gone native. That's all I have to say today. And uh, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. And thank you so much for joining me every now and then. And I will see you next time. Thank you.